my friends and welcome to another ASMR video. Today we're going to be looking at the WWF World Wrestling Federation 1993 sticker collection from Merlin. The hottest superstars included in one sticker guide. This is a collection that I did own back when I was seven or eight. As ever with these sticker collections, I never got to the end of it, never completed them, didn't really have anyone to swap with. So this was a great purchase on eBay for me, this one. We have a completed album here. It wasn't cheap, in fact it was a ridiculous amount of money for a sticker album, but for me it was worth it because of all the geeky things I liked as a child, not much takes me back more than these wrestlers at, for me, the golden age of wrestling. Of course, very biased there for the age I was at when I liked it. But my one of my ultimate heroes growing up was the man on the front there, Bret Hitman Hart. Absolutely adored him. I had the shades, the wraparound shades, which I ordered from America. It took weeks to arrive. I even had the vest as well, which I've still got. Yeah, absolutely wonderful. I'm very excited to look at this album. I'll do it in stages because it's quite a big album. So there'll be a few videos on this. I've got to get my money's worth. Um, so, yeah, without further ado, let's take a look. Before I look into the book, I'll just look at the uh, front cover. Obviously, we've got a few examples of stickers here. And we have, obviously, Bret Hart would have been the champion at the time, I believe. So he's the star on the cover. Merlin, I don't think they do stickers anymore. They used to be the number one. Uh, I do prefer the Merlin albums to the Panini ones. On the back here we have the classic logo, World Wrestling Federation. Of course this is before it had to change its name to the WWE because of the World Wildlife Fund, I think it was, that uh, didn't like the same uh, an acronym, so uh, we've got the price on here is 75p for an album. I imagine the stickers were probably only about 25p a packet as well. Ah, oh, great times, but of course, this is now 30 years old. Wow, 30 years! It's actually quite a heavy book because all the stickers are in there. It's, it's nice to have that feeling of having a complete album. So, let's take a look, shall we? So, we start off with a word by Jack Tunney, who was the president of the WWF. So, we've got... Uh, a bit from him. I don't think I'm going to read that bit. That's not particularly exciting. So the first page of the album we have is the WWF on TV. We've got Macho Man, Jerry the King Lawler, and Vince McMahon. At the time, I thought Vince McMahon was purely a commentator. I didn't realise that he basically owned it. So, yeah, that was crazy. We've got um, Mean Gene. Can't really see, read that from here. Mean Gene. Oakland. Oakland. Lord Alfred. Hayes and Sean Mooney. I vaguely remember, I definitely remember him. Vaguely remember him. And of course, remember those. The hottest ticket in town. Every week of the year, World Wrestling Federation superstars can be found in explosive live ring action in some part of the world. There is
There's little doubt, however, that when it comes to the ultimate confrontation of muscle, skill, power and bravado, there are four events in the wrestling calendar which highlight the year. WrestleMania, Royal Rumble, SummerSlam and Survivor Series. At the time of writing, the world is awaiting the advent of WrestleMania 9, which, for the very first time, takes place at that internationally famous venue, Caesars Palace in Las Vegas. So on here we have the WWF logo, which I think should have been number one sticker, but that's up to them. I think you've got to start with a shiny, haven't you? If that's number one, and obviously I can't tell because they're all filled in. That's a crazy decision in my eyes. To start with the TV. Anyway, we've got the shiny of that. I don't know whether the that's part of the logo or is that like an asterisk for I was there as well. Maybe it's part of the logo. I never really realised that. Unless that's just saying what it means. In which case it's again madness to have it as on the logo itself, on the sticker. We have the Royal Rumble, WrestleMania 9. SummerSlam and Survivor Series. Now, this one is actually not just got the WrestleMania logo, we've actually got the number 9 on there as well. It's specific to this year. Now, for those of you who have listened to my channel before, I've not always got the best memory, so I'm going to guess in my head, because I've not liked wrestling for years and years, when these events were from memory, I believe, Royal Rumble was first in the year. I always seem to think that's January. I remember WrestleMania was about March time. SummerSlam, I'm guessing maybe August, September, possibly, maybe even July. And Survivor Series, I always thought was about November. If I was to choose in order of how much I enjoyed them as a, as a child, I always preferred WrestleMania and SummerSlam were definitely the best two for me. You've got the real big, uh, do you call them fights? I don't know. Uh, the real big matchups. Royal Rumble was uh, pretty good fun as well. Um, and Survivor Series, I didn't really tend to watch much. But I do remember WrestleMania 9 at Caesars Palace. I remember my nan recording that for me uh, on Sky before pay-per-view she'd record it for me and yeah it'd be really good watching it I remember it was outside and they were dressed up like the Roman Empire and the Caesar and that it was a uh, it was quite a spectacle um, and I think not long after this or around this time there was another event which isn't good enough to get its own sticker but I absolutely loved King of the Ring that was such a good tournament I loved that So on the first page, just try and get this into focus a bit more, we've got Precious Metal, which is the belts. So take a close look at these belts. The ultimate goal of any World Wrestling Federation superstar. Every one of them would spend his last drop of energy in the quest for the unequaled acclaim that follows the conquest of each of the three championship titles. Those who have experienced the moment when they earn the right to place one of the coveted belts around their waist truly have come to know the meaning of greatness. So we've got the main one there. I'm going to have to bring this closer to me again, unfortunately. Uh, so we've got the main. Oh, hang on, no, we haven't. I've got that wrong. So. That looks like the main belt. I've just read that it says Intercontinental, which I always thought was not as good. And that one's a tag team one. We got Bobby the Brain Heenan here. I'm not particularly going to read about him. So each one's got a logo. Not a shiny, but a logo. Um, 
It was really fun. As a commentator, I did like him. In fact, let's go for it. Let's read it, shall we? It seems as if wherever Bobby Heenan ventures, trouble follows. The brain, who is known as the weasel to his numerous detractors, is a formula, formula, is a former World Wrestling Federation manager. During his managerial tenure in the Federation, Heenan led two tag teams to the Tag Team Championship and several wrestlers to the Intercontinental title. Heenan has since removed himself from the managerial corpse and is now the Federation's broadcast journalist. Each week, Heenan co-hosts Wrestling Challenge with Gorilla Monsoon and All-American Wrestling with Mean Gene Oakland on USA Network. In addition, Heenan can be found each month in the World Wrestling Federation magazine. He writes Brainstorms, which is one of the magazine's most controversial columns. Okay, here we have probably the highlight of the book for me. Bret Hitman Heart. I love these ones where you have to build up the picture as well. So the person who's got this album before me has not done a terrible job. It's not too bad. You can definitely tell it's four separate stickers, but um, yeah, it's quite nice. I noticed this one's a shiny there. Nice logo there. A lot of pink with uh, Bret Hart. Some good stickers of him there. Very nice looking guy. As I say, absolute hero to me growing up. He always seemed like a good guy. He always was on the right side of the law, always doing the right thing. Didn't really um, get involved when uh, all the other dodgy shenanigans were going on. So I'll read his bio. As of this writing, Brett Hitman Hart reigns supreme as the World Wrestling Federation champion. Brett captured the title last October in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, Canada, and has since defended it against the Federation's toughest and most able-bodied competitors. For instance, weeks after he bagged the belt, Brett put the title on the line against such superstars as the Berserker, Virgil and Papa Shango. He beat these athletes and went on to face Shawn Michaels at the Survivor Series, Razor Ramon at the Royal Rumble, and just weeks ago was slated to face Yokozuna, all 505 pounds of him, at WrestleMania 9. Brett's finishing manoeuvre, the sharpshooter, has been one of his formidable weapons against his opposition. The manoeuvre, along with the other tactics he masters, has served him well in the Federation. Hart has held multiple titles in the Federation. In addition to the World Belt, Hart has also co-held the World Wrestling Federation Tag Team Championship on two different occasions, as well as a pair of intercontinental title reigns. He possesses, as his millions of supporters know, excellence of execution when he's between the ropes. Next page, Razor Ramon. Again, he's got a shiny for a logo there. Some nice pictures of him again we got before. Stickers put together. I'm just looking at the style and wondering if that means anything, but I don't think it does. that and bore you to death I'll just pick out bits I want to read so he's from Miami known for being a ruthless street to the thug finishing tactic the razor's edge favorite quote say hello to the bad guy and no titles held I don't know if it comes across on camera or not but I can't get it out how 
bright that sticker is. I'm going to go back and read uh, about Bret Hart here. So he is uh, from Calgary, Alberta, Canada, known for possessing excellence of execution, finishing tactic, the sharpshooter. And let's be honest, everyone tried that on their younger brother, didn't they? I certainly did. We were always allowed one wrestling move on each other, and I'd always choose the sharpshooter. Funny enough, I went first, and he never got to do one on me. Anyway, back to the book. Favourite quote. I'm the best there is, the best there was, and the best that there, the best that ever will be. I always thought it was the best there ever will be. But I've got that wrong, obviously. So he's the current Federation champion, and he also has been Intercontinental champion twice, and Tag Team title champion twice. They've spelt favourite in the American way. I know this is all American, but they're specifically um, doing it to the UK market because um, Jack Tunney at the start says about watching Sky TV every week uh, or the Federation's UK live events. But anyway, I'm just nitpicking now. So after Razor Ramon, we have Kamala. I vaguely remember him. Strange looking face paint there. Uh, nice logo. So he's Ugandan, known for being a fearless jungle combatant. Finishing tactic, big splash off the ropes. Not particularly um, technical, is it? Favourite quote, he doesn't speak English. No titles. It's quite funny actually that he uh, he couldn't uh, can't speak English. <laughs> I love this. Um, Kimishi, however, after however after. Kamala's Survivor Series coffin match in which the Undertaker nailed Kamala inside a casket. Kamala wasn't the same, according to Whippleman. Whippleman said Kamala lost his competitive edge and wouldn't punish opponents after he won his matches. That's Harvey and Kimchi. Kimchi. I don't know who Kimchi is. Began to abuse Kamala. They slapped him, they kicked him, they spit on him. Reverend Slick observed the cruel treatment and sided with the massive African. After a while, Kamala turned on his tormentors and is now advised by the good Reverend Kamala. Oh, good Reverend. Kamala, as it turns out, didn't lose his competitive edge. He just needed guidance and support from the fans. Wow, what a story. I have to say I don't remember that Reverend at all. him there, Slick. I don't remember him. Or Kim, oh that's that kimchi we talked about. I, wow, that's weird. It's like a badger or something. I, I don't remember that at all. Him, her, it, I don't know, I don't remember. Of course I remember Ball Bearer. Again, a very bright colour. Strange looking and strange sounding man. This is his original guys, instead of the, um, in my opinion, absolute rubbish version afterwards where he came on was like a biker. Um, after I started, um, what, after I stopped watching wrestling. But yeah, this was Classic Undertaker. From Death Valley, known for being the Federation's Grim Reaper. Finishing tactic with Tombstone. Favourite group, West in Peace. Federation title. Well, 
obviously isn't coming across for you guys watching this that is to me is the smell of the book it really does smell 30 years old ah, another guy I loved growing up Mansion Man Randy Savage the hat there I believe he wore the hat all the time because he was absolutely frightened to death that he was receding and losing his hair so not every time but most times he's wearing a hat nice bright colours as well I do like Matt Chipman he was always a nice guy and he was a great commentator I loved his oh yeah obviously I'm not going to do that properly with ASMR voice um, he's from Florida known for being one of the Federation's all time greats I'd go along with that finishing tactic elbow from the top top turn look cool Again, not very technical. Favourite quote, just did it. Oh yeah. Title sailed Intercontinental Federation title twice. Doink the Clown. I've never seen that logo before in my life. Quite an interesting one. I like it. Doink was... Um, Really, really scary to me as a child. I didn't like him at all. Scary clown. Probably, probably scarier than it. Pennywise. Known for being a sick clown. Finishing tactic. The stump puller. Favourite quote, just laugh, I'm laughing. No titles held. I've got to read about Doink. Doink the Clown thinks he is a funny guy. That's what people say about me. He was first seen in the World Wrestling Federation last fall. Regularly, he followed the superstars from town to town and cheered on his favourites. As the weeks progressed, however, Doink started to show his true colours. Initially, he played pranks on various superstars. He tripped wrestlers with wire and planted banana peels in the aisle so that they would slip. Classic. Finally, Doink stepped over the line when his tricks caused children to cry, thus incurring the wrath of Crush, who came to ringside and to warn the clown. He didn't listen. Doink appeared at ringside several weeks later, his arm supported by a sling, and used the limb, which was actually a lead filled hypothesis. Excuse my pronunciations. To severely injure Crush, Doink later said that was the best trick he performed to date. What a sicko. Wow. I enjoyed reading that. Okay, moving on to the next page, we have Brooklyn Brawler, who I have almost no memory of at all. Known for being a cruel gutter fighter. Finishing tactic, knee drop from the top rope. Favourite quote, I'm the sneakiest man in the ring today. Title sailed, none. From New York. I don't remember him. Okay, we have uh, Yokozuna and Mr. Fuji. Managers don't get themselves a shiny. Yokozuna is famous for winning the 1993 Rumble. Finishing tactic, bonsai splash. Favourite quote, Yosh. Totals held none. He used to scare me when he used to go on the ropes and just sit on his opponent. I used to think, I hope they get out of the way if this doesn't go wrong. Never liked Yokozuna. He wasn't really a wrestler, he just. He was basically just big. He had no skill at all. Okay, someone who I didn't like at first growing up because he was kind of like Bret Hart Renard's rival, but I grew to love is Shawn Michaels. Technically, just an incredible wrestler. 
I'm Eamon Brown. So far from what I've seen on the book, stands head and shoulders above everyone else. Puts on a great spectacle. Um, yeah, really like him. And also, I haven't really talked about the theme songs. But I used to like Brown Hearts growing up. I think it was really cool. I've listened to it again now. It's not actually that great. But Shawn Michaels, oh, what a theme tune. Incredible. I'll get back and just see on the other people if I liked those ones. Razor Ramon, that had quite a good little beat to it. Yeah, I quite like that one. It allowed him to slow walk into the ring with his toothpick. I don't remember Kamala. The Undertaker's theme tune, which I imagine changed when he changed, was really good. All the lights went off and oh, it was brilliant. Really scary. Iconic. Matching Mounds was good and upbeat. Doinks was quite good as well. Nice little um da -da 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 -da. and then it kicked into some quite nasty music. Don't remember that guy. That was boring. But Shawn Michaels, definitely the best so far. So he's known for being cocky and bold. His finishing tactic is the bag suplex. Favourite quote, Shawn Michaels is in the building. Titles held, current Intercontinental Champion. Sensational Sherry there. I remember her, but I can't see what's so sensational around her. Papa Shango. Remember? I remember him, I don't remember the theme tune though. Uh, known for being the Federation's voodoo man. Finishing tactic, shoulder breaker. Favourite quote, welcome to my darkness. No titles. I'll just go back. Interestingly, we've got finishing tactic, back suplex. Now, from what I remember of Shawn Michaels, I thought he did a really good uh, kick. I think it was called Sweet Chin Music. I think I've remembered that right. Maybe that wasn't his finishing tactic, but it seemed to be from what I remember. And again, it's got quite a cool name as well, Sweet Chin Music. Okay, I've got to read about this one as well. Shango placed a curse on the hitman, Shango said Brett wouldn't survive SummerSlam with his belt. In a sense, Shango was correct. Hart lost the title. Other weird things have happened when Shango appears on the scene. Before a televised match on Superstars last year, for example, Shango rent into an incantation. He rolled back his eyes. He thruffed at the mouth. He waved his arms over his head. Suddenly the house lights were somehow deactivated, and Shango's opponent fell to the canvas with a strange black goo oozing from his forehead. This phenomenon has yet to be explained. It makes you wonder why he doesn't do it more often. Bam Bam Bigelow. Didn't particularly like him. I didn't like his tattoo on his head, it's just weird. Known for his tattoo laden cranium. Finishing tactic, headbutt from the top pads. Favourite quote, bam bam, it's going to burn everyone. No titles. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of him. Just see when we get to halfway in this book. We're nearly there. Skinner. I don't remember that guy much. Really cool logo though. He's from the Florida Everglades, known for being a cool man from the swamps. Finishing tactic, the Gator Breaker. Favourite quote, Skinner's going to skin you alive. No titles. I don't remember him, but he sounds pretty cool. Just reading this now. 
Skinner relishes the pain and agony he inflicts upon others. To make his opponents suffer, he trounces them with rabbit punches, eye rakes and big boots to the erector spinae area. He has also been known to gnaw at the competition's foreheads. In fact, his incisors have opened, has opened up a few, which resulted in stitches and antibacterial injections. Wow, that's quite something. The Berserker. I vaguely remember this guy from Iceland. Being known for being uncontrollable, finishing tactic, front slam. Favourite quote, Huss. No titles. <laughs> I don't remember this guy. And now we're in the middle of the book, so I'll make this my last one for this video, and I'll do another video um, for the second half um, afterwards, um, at a later date. So we have Crush. Quite a nice little logo there. Known for being one of the Federation's strongest athletes, finishing tactic, the Cranium Crusher. Favourite quote, Shaka Rudder. No titles. I can't remember whether Crush was a good guy or a bad guy. I seem to remember that he was bad, but maybe did he turn good or maybe go the other way, I can't remember. I know one time I didn't particularly like him. So, anyway, that's the first half of this book. I will do the other half uh, shortly, um, but we've gone over half an hour now and I just don't believe people watch ASMR videos for that long, so I'm going to do the other half um, at a later date. Hopefully you've enjoyed this. I'll just go one more quick run through for you of what we've covered today. So 1993 sticker collection. soon thank you for watching hope you've enjoyed this um, let me know if you've got uh, similar experiences of wrestling as a child and uh, happy memories if uh, great nostalgia about it and if you agree with my opinions on the on the wrestlers we've covered so far so um, thank you again for watching and i'll see you on the next video